60 seconds. People, please don't hit the psych. Um, I never got the memo. Hachi, Hi there, welcome to You Don't Know Jack. How many people are flying solo? Put your flaps up and type in your name. Yeah. Oh yeah, you know what? I also need to know if you had plans for a 21 question. That would be way cool. Responsible for okay, your buzzer is the letter B on your keyboard. That's B as in as in the letter B on your keyboard. God, your day was a hey, pretty long the time. Game show, not what is it, like 40, okay. 50 years? Seconds. Seconds. Never ask a woman. All right, listen up. As soon as you think you know the answer to a question, buzz in. Then you have to hit the number that corresponds to the answer you want. Got that? Ten, Ten seconds. Good luck. Nine, Nine, we're going here. Eight, eight, lose seven, the desktop. Six. Okay, Five, go to black. Four. Don't forget three. To try even slower Stand by, crotch people. Crotch. Cross the line of good taste into great taste. like you don't know anyone who played the game with you. What a shame. Well, at least you know you'll win. Okay. I'm sorry, Dave. It's question one. <laughs> All right, here's the deal. My, he's big. And you pop a right answer, you got 2,000 bucks. All right, get ready to buzz in and type. You know, He-Man is a master of the universe. The blue whale is the largest animal in the world, and Barnum and & Bailey's is the greatest show on Earth. So who's the biggest dog in the world? Did you make this mess? Bad! Bad! Digby the Sheepdog is the central character in the 1973 film Digby, the biggest dog in the world. I hear he's so big he can stick his nose in God's crotch. Cut the red wire! Watch out, it's gonna blow! That was close. Too close. Well, what do we have here? Hey, good looking, what you got hooking? And we got 3,000 bucks in the pot. Okay, class, pay attention. Remember that 1987 docudrama about hookers called Working Girls? Well, considering the name of the director of Working Girls, what might you expect the director to have done to the cast if there had been a problem on the set? Given them all 40 wax with an axe, written helter-skelter in their blood, stolen their money and jumped out of a plane, or stolen a loaf of their bread? Now, that'd be D.B. Cooper on the side of the Invisible Man. It would have been so beautiful if you'd only picked this. The di director of Working Girls is named Lizzie Borden. Of course, the subjects of her docudrama also gave a few guys 40 wax, but it cost them 100 bucks. I need a category. The selection is, it takes two to file a lawsuit. This one's worth a grand. Let's see how you handle this one. If Judge Wapner from the People's Court called the title character from Witness as a surprise witness, what might you see? The witness in Witness is a young Amish boy who sees a murder in a train station bathroom. Sucks for the Amish kid, though. None of his friends would see him on TV. you on this. She never rewinds either. And we're talking 2,000 for this baby. Okay, get ready to buzz in and type when you know the answer. Oh no, you're in line behind 80 Annie from Oklahoma at the video store again. 80 Annie is trying to rent the James Bond movie, but she can't tell the clerk which one she wants. Considering her famous song from Oklahoma, what movie must she be renting?
Here's what you should have typed in. Oh! Adel Annie is just a girl who can't say no. And I hate to break this to you since you're behind her in line, but she's also the girl who can't pay by any method but check. Okay, pick He's so prime all the time. Five. Okay, give it up for... I'll appropriate that genre, thank you. How does $2,000 sound? Okay, pay attention because you need to know this. When it comes to making movies, the producers are the ones who secure the money for a film. Given the nationality of the producers of Clint Eastwood's A Fistful of Dollars, which title would have been more appropriate? A Fistful of Lyra, A Fistful of Lempira, A Fistful of Leone, or A Fistful of Dawn? Oh, what a shame. Here's what you should have picked. Since the producers of the Spaghetti Western A Fistful of Dollars are Italian, it would make sense that the movie's title include the word Lira, Italy's currency. Although based on the exchange rate, A Fistful of Dollars would amount to like a buttload of Lira. I need a she was built like an interstate cloverleaf, made for speed with all the right curves. All I could think of was six. Let's give a nice warm welcome to, that's easy for you to say, $3,000 on the table for this one. Pull out your antenna and get ready to buzz. Which of the following lists a movie about a bank heist, a movie about a noodle shop, and a movie about a bank heist? Alfie Ishtar, Oki Finoki, Clute Cuffs, California, Zentropa Ninochka, Oklahoma, or Rafifi Tampopo, Top Copy? Rafifi Tampopo, Top Copy. A bank heist, a noodle shop, and a bank heist. I hear they're filming remakes of these films for today's audiences. They're going to be called Bank Heist, Noodle Shop, and Another Bank Heist. Category, please. Now showing. If you don't like my driving, stay off the sidewalk. And you pocket 2,000 bucks if you get this one. Hey, remember the transcontinental road race in Death Race 2000 where running over people got you points? Let's say you're driving in the transcontinental road race of Death Race 2000. If you could run over any of the following road crossers, which would net you the most points? Two 21-year-old mimes? The Beatles? Nope, that would only net you 80 points. And besides, Paul is already dead. The correct answer is... In the transcontinental road race, kids under 12 are worth 70 points, and old ladies 75 and over are worth 110 points. Who says old people are a drain on society? Okay, I need a category. Hey, nice selection, because you just chose yourself a big fat hunk in question. Are you ready for the dis or dat? This dis or dat questions category is the theater's full of them. Now I'm gonna read off. Oh, oh, so you already know how to play. Okay, let's put 30 seconds on the clock then. Let's dance. Personal best, lesbians are dead. The dresser. Bound. Team for two. Claire of the Moon. Kiss me, Kate. Last one, let's make love. That's all of them. You only got three right, but look at it this way. At least you're done. Hey, could be worse. Could also be a hell of a lot better, but we're not gonna go into that now. Let's move on. All right, hit me. And I believe this one's called, You're Only As Good As Your Last Picture. $1,000 at stake on this one. You know how a picture is supposed to be worth a thousand words? Well, taking his famous nickname, the man of a thousand faces, literally, whose driver's license? Juan Cheney's driver's license would be worth a million words because he would have a thousand pictures on it. And of course, every last one of them makes him look fat. Okay, pick a category.
coming at you. Aw, oh, seas on skates. Thousand bucks if you get it. You know, the 1980 Olivia Newton-John movie isn't the first time in movie history that we were introduced to a fabulous place called Xanadu. Because his hangout in her roller disco... Xanadu is both the name of Kane's home and Orson Welles' classic Citizen Kane and the roller disco in Olivia's movie, Xanadu. You know what they say, great minds think alike. That's it for round one, let's go to round two. Every question in round two is worth twice as much. I need a category. Let's see what we got going. An American werewolf in commercials. You get 4,000 clams for this one. Grease yourself up and get ready to wrestle. If David Naughton starved an American werewolf in London had incorporated into the film the advertising slogan which he was associated with at the time, what might he have said? Where's the slaughtered beef? David Naughton was the star of the Dr. Pepper ad campaign back in the late 70s. I think Dr. Pepper dropped him once the rumors started that drinking their product made you wake up naked in zoos. The thought makes me want to go pick up a case. This category is known as Kids These Days. This one can net you $6,000. Put it in gear, cause here we go. If Bernardo Bertolucci's 1979 film Luna were remade today as one of those Honey I Did Something Wacky to the Kids movies, which of these would be the best title? Honey I I'm afraid we'll have to garnish your wages. <laughs> Let's see what a correct answer looks like. <laughs> In the 1979 film Luna, Jill Clayburgh has sex with her son. No brainer though, who wouldn't rather have sex with Jill Clayburgh than Rick Moranis? Alright, hit me. <laughs> Thirteen. Here we have, and the award for most pretentious goes to, play your cards right, you win 4,000 bucks. Okay, Conan the Vocabularian, maybe you can help me out. Tell me this. Tell me which phrase rhymes with the correct pronunciation of this actor's name. Alf Seams, Safe Pines, Mouth Inez, or Chafe Fiend. Rafe Fines rhymes with Safe Pines. Yeah, he was great in the Anglish Pashin. Category. I proudly present Crime Pays, but to whom should I write the check? To G's if you get this one right. Hey, remember when the guy gets killed at the beginning of Casablanca and Claude Rains tells his cops to round up the usual suspects? If instead of the usual suspects, the Casablanca cops brought in the mysterious villain from the movie The Usual Suspect, Kaiser Soze is the mysterious villain in The Usual Suspects. He's played by Kevin Spa- Hey, hey, uh, you've seen it, right? Okay, I need a- In the deepest reaches of the Congo lies question 15. The category? Quality is job what? I'm sending over 4,000 dead presidents if you get this one. Strap on your helmet, we're going in. Based on how Harrison Ford made a living before achieving stardom, for which of these famous scenes from his movies was he probably most prepared? Teaching in Raiders of the Lost Ark, building a barn and witness, performing surgery. In between his early roles, Harrison Ford made his living as a carpenter. Okay, pick a category. Uh-oh, wet suck tit shine floor. It's time for a ticklish test gum. Take a look at your gibberish category. Kinky adventures in third world countries. The opening value for this gibberish question is going to be 10K. All right, as soon as you know the answer, buzz in, because I'm taking away some cash every second and a half. All right, get ready and tell me, with what film term does this rhyme? Wax, oi, Haitian, groove me. And don't be fooled by the punctuation.
Go for it. Type in your answer. Frankly, I don't know who would want to see a movie about office supplies. What? Oh, oh, I, I thought it was faxploitation. I need... The following question has been rated 17. No questions under 17 permitted. The category is Tom Cruise Control. Hello, we're talking six grand, so pay attention. Get your finger out of your ear and listen up. We're going. If Maverick from Top Gun found himself engaged in a dogfight with the star of the 1933 airplane movie, Christopher Strong, with whom would he be doing battle? Catherine Hepburn, Douglas Fairbanks... Darling? No. <laughs> Should have picked this. It'd be Tom Cruise up against Catherine Hepburn. Top Gun, my ass. Category. What do we got out there? It looks like... It looks like 18, sir. For your enjoyment, seize the day. Gesundheit. Four thousand big ones for a right answer here. Hey, you remember that movie Dead Poet Society? Well, suppose you want to start your own chapter. Rather than ask members to carpe diem, you want them to carpe demi instead. Because he hasn't slept with Demi more on screen, which actor could not join your club? Tom Cruise starred with Demi in A Few Good Men, but he does not sleep with her in the movie, so as of 1996 anyway, he can't join your chapter of the DPS. <laughs> Turns out that Tom Cruise is not one of A Few Good Men after all. Category four. This one's called Theme Restaurants We Hate. Oh, let's just make this one $6,000. Fire up those frontal lobes. Here's the question. Say you're at the Literal Film Title Cafe. You've had some tasty fried green tomatoes and ask for seconds. If the waiter thinks you're referring to the movie seconds, what will happen? You'll get plastic surgery and a new life. You'll assist Jim Belushi. Interesting choice. <laughs> Let me show you what someone smart would have picked. In the movie Seconds, a depressed guy gets Rock Hudson's face and therefore a new life. Hey man, if it's Rock Hudson, I don't want Seconds. I want all you can eat. All right, hit me. Say hello to Historically Dramatic Dumpsters, and it's worth $2,000 if you get this one right. Hey, kids, it's time to do a little celebrity trash picking. Looks like we've got a bronze sword, some blue face paint, a... William Wallace is the Mel Gibson character from Braveheart. And since his clothes are in the trash, Braveheart must also be bare-assed. Oh, so you know how this movie ends, huh? Well, then let's fade to black. Here's your category. We need to document this. Oh, we'll see about that. Good luck.
comes on on video. Let's see what it did to your score. That's the game. Player, I couldn't have done a better job myself. But then, I wasn't playing by myself, was I? But seriously, player, and I don't say this to just everybody. You don't know Jack! All right, that's a wrap, everybody. Get the commercials rolling and roll what's happening. Are we going again? Well, isn't this a special moment? You've knocked some poor sap off the high score list. They weren't even around to defend their position. Well, once you're all done feeling proud, let me know if you want to play.